All right. Appreciate you sending over the videos. We do have some things to look at, listen to, a uh, bit of, I guess you could call it commentary on what, uh, <clears throat> what I was seeing, what I was hearing. So, uh, looking at number two, uh, the thing that I'm seeing and hearing is something that, um, one of the things we wanted to address was how you were changing chords or when you're changing chords. So with that one, like saying slide is good to remind yourself to slide. However, when you slide is the big thing. So you don't want to slide into the chord to be at the chord when beat three happens. The metronome clicking that third time is telling you that's when you move. So you got the chord into position on the third beat, absolutely, but you're sliding into it too early. You're not waiting until the third click to tell you to go. So let's take, let's take a listen, let's take a look. And I'll try, try to better explain what I'm talking about. Uh, just to point out, and I might need to go back and forth here on, on some tuning. Um, for the new stuff, we're going to use a drop D tuning, okay? Which, so I just moved, like literally a couple days ago, like Sunday night, I moved from Denver up north to Cheyenne. So I am no longer going to be a Colorado resident. I'm gonna be a Wyoming resident. I don't have all my guitars here. The uh, six string standard tune guitar I recently started using as a floating tremolo system. And it has locking tuners and it's just way too much of a pain in the butt to put in drop D tuning. So that's why I have the seven string because those are the two guitars I have up here right now. Everything else is still in Colorado. Uh, so let's try and ignore this low B. I'll still be playing in your tuning. But anyway, drop D. Um, basically, like your, your low E string gets dropped down to the D note. So if I bring it back up to standard. standard tuning, basically like your open E will be in tune with your 7th fret on the A string. So doing it by ear, I would use the 5th fret on the A string to drop the E down to a D. Definitely use a tuner to help with this. We'll, we'll get to the drop D in just a second. This was in drop D already because I was writing the new stuff. But anyway, uh, let's address what's going on here with, with the video. So let's take a look at what you're doing here first. All right, exercise two and 60 beats. One, two, three, four. Okay, so with that metronome going, I'm going to try and replicate it. Hang on, tracking volume. Okay, there we go. Actually, okay. So what I'm seeing hearing is something like this, going like... I'm going to try to do that better. That's 
basically what I'm hearing. This is what it needs to be. So what I'm hearing from you is you're moving the chord too early. And it basically needs to be like no time whatsoever. Like when that third click happens, it's fast. Like a quick, quick slide. So again, what I'm hearing is this. It needs to be this. See, like I'm waiting until that third click to tell me, boom, it's time to go. Okay. So if we, I mean, 60 beats per minute is already pretty slow, but let's take a look, take a listen, at a half speed here, so you can really see what's going on. So as I mentioned earlier, like you're getting to the, the chord pretty much right when that third beat happens, which is, which is good in the sense that you're not getting there like super early, but we wanna to tighten everything up to make all this stuff sound as best as possible. You need to move when the third click happens, not to get in position for that third click, but when that third click happens, that's, that's when you want to move, okay? Um, so that's what we are uh, we're addressing with, th uh, not that, with this. Um, so with this one, it's just like pick, slide, pick, slide, pick, slide, pick, slide. So you need to slide when that metronome clicks. So what I'm gonna suggest, and I'll get into this, we should go with this part now. All right, let's demonstrate this now, and then take a look at the other stuff. Oh, sorry, I'm gonna go into drop D now. So, you, to make sure you're tapping your foot when that metronome goes, okay? So what you're going to do, and this might feel really, really weird at first, but this is what I want you to do. You're going to slide a split second after you tap. After your foot taps, pew, slide. After your foot taps, pew, slide. Obviously, I can't really get my foot in the camera here, but I'm going to try and tap. Well, I mean, it's going to be tapping on with the metronome, so I'll, I'll nod my head to make it more obvious what I'm doing. Um, here we go. 60 beats per minute. One, two, three, four. One, two. Exaggerating the head nod, trying to play it well. All right, uh, here it is at 120. One, two, three, four. Just bar 
finger covers the three notes you need. And that's all you gotta do for that drop D tuning. 240, one, two, one, two, three, four. So again, it's like fast, 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 fast. Even if it was like dirt slow, god awful slow, 30 beats per minute. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and so on. Um, so I hope that makes sense. When that metronome clicks, that's when you move. You don't. You do not move to get into position for the click. The click tells you that's when it's time to go. Um, and you know, there's, there's, a, there's a reason why we're doing drop D, and that's because it's to increase the likelihood that things get played correctly over the next two weeks until we get to meet up again. So, the, uh, the next thing we need to look at and take a listen to is how, how you performed uh, the other one. So, you, you started off well enough with how the strumming is supposed to go. As you got faster, you, you lost what the rhythm is, and you started to do a swing feel. And well, let, let's, let's get to that. Like it's, it's more obvious at the uh, faster speeds, but let's, uh, let's start taking a look at what's going on here. All right, exercise number three at 60 beats per minute. So like with that performance there, strumming, perfect. That was perfect. For the strumming, however. same issue we just talked about was happening here. You're moving your hand, your fretting hand, too early. So, like you're basically going, let's go to 60 here. So you're going. But you hear the slide happening. We don't want to hear that when these chords are in such close proximity. We need it to sound like... Now, if the chord was like crazy far apart, sure, we're gonna hear the slide. Something like... Because you have to. I mean, that's way too huge of a gap. But for what you and I are doing currently, the chords are close enough, you should not hear a slide like that. Okay, I mean that's just for like 
uh, you know, getting to more advanced stuff eventually, but like... Having to change chords really, really fast like that and making it sound precise. Like you couldn't do riffs that way and have it sound that brutal <laughs> and that intense if you heard all the sliding in between. So that's what we're working towards, getting that precision. So, um, and again, this is why we're gonna be doing the drop D stuff because it's gonna be easier for you to make chord transitions, I think, I think, uh, because we're gonna go from the open strings to some frets and then back to the open strings, back to some frets. I think that will help with making sure that you can just concentrate on how the strumming goes and not the chord changes so much. So you're not having to worry about getting into position at the correct time. It's just take the finger off, take, put it back on, on, off. Anyway, so continuing on with this, So it's, it's starting to turn into a swing feel here. I think you correct it a bit as you went on with the speed. Yeah, you definitely got better at this speed. Let's listen to it half speed. Now with this being eighth notes, you're supposed to have everything 100% evenly spaced. What ends up happening, the swing feel, you end up going like tick ka tick ka tick ka tick ka So we're gonna listen to that and take half speed so it's more apparent what's going on. And now it's sounding better. So probably not the best speed to really show what I'm talking about. Let's just continue on to the faster speeds where it really becomes apparent. Okay, at 160 beats per minute. Okay. Again, it needs to be, let's see, 160 beats per minute. It's, what it needs to be is, See what happens. So could you hear that? Could you hear the difference there? Yeah, this is what it needs to be. What you did was So you're you're taking too long to do your upstrokes. You're waiting too long for the upstroke. I want you to hear this at half speed so you can really hear what I'm talking about.
And another thing that's really, really stands out there, watching that back at half speed, it's like you're changing the chord while doing the upstroke, which ties into the whole, you move your hand too early. You need to move your hand during the downstroke, not during the upstroke. Um, so let's get into demonstrating the, the other stuff. All right, so getting into the drop D. Okay, so I'm gonna demonstrate it at some different speeds. One thing I'd like you to do is, especially for numbers two and three, play along with Guitar Pro. Now, we haven't covered this yet, but the uh, this symbol here and over here, that's a repeat sign. So you're going to play through all that twice and then hit the last chord, okay? So if you have any questions on how to use Guitar Pro, just let me know. Um, of course, I'm going to be out of town. So you might want, need to look up some tutorial stuff. But it's pretty simple on how to use it. Um, if you already have it, I'd imagine you know how to use, how to use this thing. Um, but just real quick. Hang on. There. The biggest things to, to do here, if you're going to, uh, to follow along, make sure your cursor is at the start. Make sure that these two icons are highlighted. This way you have your count in and you have your metronome. These white dots here, you click on that to turn the metronome volume all the way up. This duration right here, uh, that's how many bars of a count in you got. So at the slow speeds, I would leave it at one bar. When you start getting up to faster speeds, Change it to two bars. This way you have eight counts instead of four. It will help you get ready to be able to play along with the Guitar Pro track a bit more easily. So, your cursor at the start. After you play through it, you come up here, click on that 60. Here's where you can enter the tempo. Let's enter 65. Enter, boom, you just change the tempo. And then once you get through that correctly, 100%, 70, and you keep going up in five BPM increments each time you get it right. And remember, always start at 60 every single day, no matter how fast you got. To make sure you're only spending about, you know, 10 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes per exercise. Set a timer if you need to. And once that 10 minutes happens, get one more good take, call it a day. All right. So no need to worry about sliding or going up to a new chord at the correct time, because you're just gonna put a finger down or take a finger off. And that's all you gotta do. All right, so here we go. Number two, count off four so you know when I'm gonna start count the rhythm out loud. So what I want you to do is say the rhythm as you play it from 60 to 120 at least. You are absolutely welcome to keep counting out loud as you go faster. Not necessary, but if it helps you, definitely do it. But 60 to 120, say it as you play it. Here we go. One, two, three, four, one, and two. Three and four, one and two, 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 three and four. I got an email 
Hopefully that wasn't too distracting. Let's go to 120. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, and four. One, and 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 two, three, and four. Done. 